Good morning and welcome to worship. Since 1997, our children's choir program at Church of the Resurrection has been sharing a musical with us on Mother's Day. Today would have been our 24th annual spring musical. It has been my honor and privilege over the years to begin my Mother's Days with all these wonderfully talented and gifted kids. I asked the participants of the previous year's musicals to share some of their favorite memories with me, and I'd like to share those with you this morning. In 1999, our program was Go, Go, Jonah. Shannon Sattler Haltrop wrote, I was just a supporting children's choir member at the time. I remember sitting on the floor, making waves with blue fabric. However, the most memorable part was the song about Nineveh. I'll never forget it. Jeff Daniels said, my most vivid memory was playing part of Jonah. I got to wear a garbage bag covered in seaweed and hold a large sign that said, repent. And that song Nineveh was the best. In 2005, our program was the song of Ruth. Holly Daniels wrote, I had been in musicals since 1998, but I don't really remember them because I was so little. So this musical was the first one I truly remembered. I was one of the leads and it was my last musical. Justin Sattler wrote, I played Boaz. Well, Ruth is obviously the main character, Boaz also played an important role in the story. While no single act of Boaz's was heroic, sometimes our small acts of obedience to God can still have a profound impact. In 2013, our program was a Technicolor Promise. Anna Vifquain writes, I was in fourth grade and loved it. Between all the fun music and getting to be one of the animals on Noah's Ark, I was so excited about performing on Mother's Day. To this day, I still remember the catchy chorus of that opening song with our rainbow ribbons. In 2018, we did By the Sea. Lexi Brenner said, I think my favorite musical was By the Sea. I really just had lots of fun. The music was great, the set looked awesome, and I think everyone had a great time during that musical. Evie Brandel said, it was really fun. I played the part of one of the servants. By the Sea was my favorite song because it's peaceful and it introduced the setting. Listening to the story for the first time, I thought about how the three people looking for Jesus never gave up on trying to find him. We should all trust in God that everything we go through is all part of God's plan. In 2019, we did Ezekiel, the Valley of the Dry Bones. Kylie Zell said, it was my favorite because I got to sing many solo parts. I played Ezekiel, and one of my favorite songs was the song about the weird visions I was having. I liked the song because it was fun and had a great tune, but also because my dad was the four-headed monster, and it was funny to see him dancing and being goofy. Benjamin Ernest said, I was one of the main characters in Bones. It was really neat that my grandpa made the puzzle we used. And Tyler Ernest said, I liked the Valley of the Dry Bones dance. Brooklyn Thaliker said, it was fun being in Ezekiel last year. The music stuck in my head for a month, but that was a good thing. Harper Gould said, I liked the song, The Valley of the Dry Bones, because it was fun to learn and do the dance. And Madison Bazalewicz wrote, this was my favorite musical because I was able to choreograph a dance for the kids and it was super fun to watch my vision come to life. Thanks. Thanks to all of you kids and parents who have supported our musicals over the years and for making those Mother's Days so special for me and for all of the moms. Mother's Day blessings to you all. 1 Peter 2, beginning with verse 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation if indeed you have tested that the Lord is good. Come to Jesus Christ, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And, like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, 
The stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It's Pastor Kim coming to you from her dining room pulpit on this fifth Sunday of Easter, May 10th, 2020. Happy Mother's Day. Today we're going to be thinking about the passage Dan just read from Peter's first letter. Now, to me, that letter brings to mind a couple of things. One that will happen in the future and one that's happened in the past. Let's start with the future. Some of you know that our son Paul will virtually graduate from Wartburg College later this month. Some of you have also heard the wonderful news that he has accepted a position to teach American history and social studies at a middle school in southwestern Iowa. Hopefully in person. We'll have to wait and see about that. Now there are many purposes for teaching history and social studies to 7th and 8th graders, not the least of which is to teach young people about their identity as American citizens. What are their responsibilities? What are their rights? What does it mean to be a good citizen? Why is it important to participate in our political process? What does it mean to work for liberty and justice for all? Paul's work will play an important part in shaping his students' identities as U.S. citizens and in recognizing their calls to service on behalf of the common good. It is good and honorable and important work. This mama is proud. Now, for the past. 25 years ago, next month, I was ordained into the Ministry of Word and Sacrament of the ELCA. The preacher I chose for my ordination service was a seminary professor from whom I had learned and for whom I had worked as a teaching assistant. His name was Dr. Mons Tag, and when he climbed into the pulpit of Christ Lutheran Church in Arcadia, Wisconsin, on June 13, 1995, he brought with him a couple of visual aids. Now his sermon theme was our identity in Christ and our calls in Christ. He didn't preach on this first Peter text that we just heard Dan read so beautifully. His text was from Philippians, the passage about our true citizenship. Nonetheless, these work hand in glove. The visual aids that uh, Dr. Tag brought were to remind all of us of our identities and our callings. First, he lifted up his passport. In it were his name, his birth date, and his photograph. And on the dark blue cover was stamped in gold the great seal of the United States of America. The passport identified him as an American citizen with all of the rights and responsibilities that identity entails. And then he lifted up his baptismal certificate. On it were his name, his birth date, the names of his parents and sponsors, the name and signature of the pastor who performed the baptism, and the name of the church where it took place. Again, the visual aid pointed to Dr. Tagg's identity, not as an American citizen, but as a child of God through Christ Jesus, an heir of God's kingdom, and a co-worker with God and all the faithful followers of the church, of all times and of all places. And he tied our baptismal identities to our calls, 
to live out the gospel in word and in deed. Not just my particular call to Maria Lutheran Church, but also the identities and calls of everyone who was gathered in the church that day. In Peter's first letter, we're reading his instructions to some brand new Christians. He refers to them as spiritual infants. So he's intent on teaching them what their new identity is. He's intent on teaching them that the calls come with their new identities and are just as important as their new names. Peter's letter reminds his readers that even though they were once not a people, now they are. Once they lived apart from God's mercy, but now they have received it. Peter writes that the rock who is Jesus, the people's former stumbling block, has become the cornerstone of their new faith and their new lives. Jesus has become the cornerstone of their new identities and their new callings. Peter gives his readers a brand new name to go with their brand new identities too. He calls them a chosen race. He calls them a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. Dear friends, those names I just read, they belong to you too. Your faith may not be new. Everyone who hears this message is at a different place in their journey of faith but you too are part of a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are God's own people, claimed and named and sent to do what Peter told his readers to do. Proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And we understand that proclaiming God's mighty acts involves not only telling, but doing. Not only remembering, but imitating. Peter's letter brings us a wonderful reminder of who we are, of whose we are, and God's call on our lives. His purpose for creating a holy nation in the first place. What does that look like? The specifics may have to do with your particular gifts, but in broad terms, it simply means this. With the love and mercy Jesus brings to you, go to others and share it. Share it with people you know and love. Share it with people who aren't yet known to you. Invite them and welcome them to the table, your table. Invite them to share their stories and listen with eagerness and openness. Appreciate the stories and the people who choose to be vulnerable enough to share them with you. Ask how you might best accompany them in a meaningful way through their struggles and their joys, through their work and their family lives. Accompanying them on their journeys, journeys of identity, journeys of faith, and journeys of calling. Now, Believe me, I am well aware of how impossible all those things seem in our current circumstances of social distancing. But until we can once again do these things in person, face to face, let's be creative and let's work toward making those connections in the midst of the present situation. There is email, there is snail mail, there are telephones and virtual gatherings. There are doorbells and safe distancing drop-offs with masked visits through a screen door. There are drive-in worship services and silly songs that involve honking the horns on our cars. These are just some of the tools given to God's royal priesthood in these days. You all have unique gifts with which you can live out your identity and callings in the name of Christ Jesus. While for now, our circle may seem small and our priority is caring for our COR family, let's look with hope and with creativity into the future when our circle can safely widen, when our physical, personal care can deepen, when new relationships and friendships can be nurtured and tended to up close 
and in person. Here's my passport. And uh, since I couldn't lay my hands on my baptismal certificate, here's the gown I wore when my parents presented me at the baptismal font. These things, the passport and my baptismal dress, remind me of my identity and of my call. So now I invite you, dear people of God, to remember who and whose you are. Remember and live into your identities. Remember and cultivate your callings. And may the spirit of the risen Christ encourage you and inspire you, prompt you and nudge you to boldly proclaim in word and in deed the mighty acts of the one who called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together, let us confess our holy Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in prayer. At the end of each petition, you will hear the words, Lord, in your mercy. Please respond hear our prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and all places in praying for the church, for the world, and for all in need. Build us up, mothering God, as living stones united in your work and will. Strengthen your church as we are sent forth to proclaim your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble us, Creator God, fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made, and guide our efforts to restore the health of our planet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they meet the needs of those seeking refuge and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, 
Help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort the suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. We especially lift up before you those on the front line, caring for coronavirus patients, working in other essential industries, and all for whom this pandemic has caused economic and other hardships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility or miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, in these days of uncertainty, make us certain that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen, just as he said. Share the good news. Hallelujah.